okay now comes the million dollar question what does it all mean all right we said all right we have formalized quantum mechanics into a set of postulates we said the mathematical framework we know how to make predictions but what does it all mean actually all right to say that electron is in two places at same time right? now even schrodinger right? schrodinger came with, came up with the wave mechanics schrodinger equation but even Schrodinger's equation predicted that there is some sort, some uh, property called superposition because it's a property of the differential equation. If psi one and psi two are two solutions, for example, okay, two solutions, then by the property of the differential equation, psi one of x plus psi two of x is also solution. All right, this is principle of superposition, and. Uh, uh, Schrodinger, even though he came up with Schrodinger equation and it made good predictions, he could not believe that there is something called superposition. And maybe he was ready to accept the superposition, but then he couldn't believe there was something called uh, measurement problem, right, or the collapse of the wave function. Right? So Schrodinger said, all right. So Schrodinger said that, all right, this is all a bit weird. Okay, I, don't, I am sorry, I had anything to do with quantum mechanics. Okay, so this is how he explained. To, to just to explain the weirdness of quantum mechanics okay he wanted to he just uh, took a macroscopic example right he said that all right consider a box which is isolated from the environment completely isolated by the uh, from the environment and put a cat inside of it all right you put a cat inside of it and inside the box this is perfectly isolated from the environment and inside the box what do you have you have got a beaker of cyanide poison cyanide gas right and on top of the gas is hanging a weight right if the weight falls on this it will break right and if the box breaks what happens the cat dies because it's cyanide gas or poisonous gas okay? now there's an ingenious device in here okay there's just one radioactive atom inside this box just one radioactive atom radioactive atom there's just one single radioactive atom inside this box and the decay of a radioactive atom is a quantum mechanical phenomenon right it's quantum mechanical it's random that's why we talk about average lifetime or half life etc so if you take a single radioactive atom you don't know it's not determined in that sense whether it will decay now or it will decay after some time or after later time right if you, we can only talk about average lifetime if you take one single atom you don't know when it will decay quantum mechanics says that you don't know when it actually decays right so if this uh, non-decayed atom is in the box, right? quantum mechanics says that after some time, right? after some time, what's the state of this atom? What's the state of this atom? Okay? So we know from the principle of superposition that the state of the system is a superposition of all possible states. Right? What are the possible states? It could have decayed and it could be not decayed. Right? So the state of the atom, I will write it like this, state of the atom, after some time, it's possible that it has decayed, it's possible that it has not decayed, right? So the general state is a superposition of both these states, right? So let's uh, wait exactly until time so that this coefficient becomes 1 by root 2. Now quantum mechanics does not say that it's either decayed or not decayed, quantum mechanics, the way we chose to speak about it quantum mechanics is saying that it's both decayed and not decayed at the same time that's superposition for you right it has to be in both slits at the same time right? but what's the corresponding state of the cat what's the corresponding state of the cat if the atom is decayed the cat is dead right if the atom is decayed the cat is dead if the atom is not decayed the cat is alive so state of the cat is dead plus alive right so Schrodinger is asking right? so are you saying that the cat is both dead and alive at the same time if you are not looking at it okay that's uh, quite a sad story for the cat okay so quantum mechanics in this situation if you take it literally all right if you take quantum mechanics literally it says that the cat actually is dead and alive at the same time inside the box right but once you open you never see the cat in superposition right so let's say we had a happy ending to our experiment okay and uh, yeah, Schrodinger is not, uh, yeah, it's maybe Schrodinger did not like cats, all right, to put cat into such a position. But the thing is that when you open the uh, box, you see an either a dead cat or an alive cat. You never see the cat in superposition, right? So this is what, suppose I opened the box and I saw a, and a cat which is alive. The state of the cat has changed from this to this, all right? This is wave function collapse for you. 
Okay. Now Schrodinger is asking, can you believe this? Right? It's so weird, can you believe this? Right? Now this is a real problem, all right? because we don't know how the wave function collapses or why the wave function collapses. All right? Now the mathematics of quantum mechanics as such does not predict that wave function has to collapse. The mathematics of quantum mechanics only says that the wave function or, or the state vector evolves according to the Schrodinger equation. And in that evolution, it's a smooth evolution, there is no collapse. All right? Collapse is an extra postulate that we have to give in order to make sense of the uh, experimental observations. All right? The fact that we always see the electron only in one of the slits, for example. Okay? So this, this is known as also the measurement problem. And it's still an open problem, right? There is no consensus as to what happens during an, uh, during the measurement, right? So if you take quantum mechanics literally, uh, it says something actually, all right? Maybe we don't have time. Let's see if we can, right? So there are many interpretations of what the mathematics of quantum mechanics means. We all know that the mathematics of quantum mechanics works. Right? There are different interpretations as to what it actually means about an electron. There is one thing called Copenhagen interpretation. Okay? This is the, what you said, orthodox interpretation. Orthodox interpretation. Orthodox interpretation. All right? So in this orthodox, this was actually put together by people like Bohr and Heisenberg, okay, they just got together, Max Born, they just got together and decided, all right, this is the solution to the problem because they thought it unproductive to think about these questions, all right. So the basic idea of Copenhagen interpretation is that the mathematics, the quantum mechanics is just a way, a mathematical way to calculate probabilities and it doesn't actually really mean anything, it doesn't really tell us anything about the actual uh, way electrons behaves in the nature. It's just a tool to calculate probabilities, right? Because we cannot measure an electron in superposition, etc. It's there's no point in considering uh, it as a literal thing. That's what they said. According to them, it's just a tool to calculate probabilities. It doesn't tell us what actually happens in nature. Okay? There's also one uh, interpretation called many worlds interpretation, which takes quantum mechanics literally, which takes quantum mechanics literally. Now, in Copenhagen interpretation, when I say that the state is summation of i, c i, phi i, it doesn't mean that it's actually in different states at the same time, all right, in this interpretation, all right. But there is a literal interpretation which says that this is actually the state of the electron. The electron is actually in different places at the same time, all right. There are different literal interpretations. One of the uh, approaches taking the wave function literally or taking quantum mechanics literally is known as the many worlds interpretation, all right. So in the many worlds interpretation, what happens is this. Okay. So when I showed the state of the cat, I was actually cheating a little bit. The actual state of this, uh, actual state of the cat is given like this, all right? Because cat alone does not have a definite state, all right? What we have is an entangled system of the particle and cat. Right? Once the particle and the cat or the box has interacted, we don't have separate wave functions. We don't have separate states for the system. What we have is an entangled state. That's what quantum mechanics predicts. All right? So after the atom has decayed, we don't have separate wave functions for the cat and the atom. All right? We only have a combined wave function. All right? On one branch of the wave function, we have an atom which is not decayed and in that branch, the cat is alive and on the another branch, the the cat, the atom is decayed and in that branch, the cat is dead, all right. So isolated system, for isolated system, we can consider separate wave function. But once the system is not isolated, you only have a wave function for a combined system, all right. That's what quantum mechanics predicts, all right. Now what happens? Now if you measure, if you measure an alive cat, what actually happens is that you are finding yourself in this branch of the wave function. Or this I'll call generally as the wave function, right? It's generally called as the wave function. So the wave function actually collapses to this state, all right? Okay. Now, if you assume that the wave function is not actually collapsing, all right? If you assume that the wave function is not actually collapsing, okay? what happens is that the atom not only interacts with the cat, but the cat interacts with the environment. Right? So it gets entangled with the environment. Okay? Now once you open the box, it gets entangled with you. Right? It entangled with you looking at it. Right? So the environment of the dead cat is different from the environment of an alive cat because a dead cat is uh, lying down and correspondingly the positions of other particles will have changed or the states of the other particles will have changed etc. Right? So if you take quantum mechanics literally, this is the state of the quantum mechanical system 
uh, after it reacts with the environment and then environment immediately reacts with you and the rest of the universe. Right? So, in this interpretation, quant the many worlds interpretation is saying that the universe actually separates into two branches because the environment is interacting with the rest of the universe. The wave function does not collapse, the wave function actually does not collapse, but the universe actually branches into these two branches. Both these branches exist. All right, and both these branches in one of the branch you will have measured you would have seen an alive cat and in the other branch you would have seen a dead cat right so by each measurement by each, each measurement of a quantum mechanical phenomenon the universe is actually splitting into branches all right so according to this interpretation of quantum mechanics the many worlds interpretation uh, according to many worlds interpretation there are uh, probably Okay, possibly infinite versions of you existing because when each quantum event occurs, the universe is actually splitting into, uh, yeah, splitting into separate branches. All right. So in this picture, the whole universe has just one wave function, and this evolves according to Schrödinger equation. You don't have to introduce anything like wave function collapse. There is only an appearance of wave function collapse. What happens is that you become part of that wave function. All right. You become part of the wave function. There is one in which you see the cat alive okay and you are happy all right and there's you have another universe in which you see the dead cat and then you are sad right so this would be the total state of the universe including you this is the many worlds interpretation and there are people who take this really seriously all right because without bringing any extra thing like measurement problem or uh, extra thing like wave function collapse you believe that quantum mechanics is correct and ask what does it tell us, tell us about the universe and this is what quantum mechanics tells you about the universe. Right? There are problems in this interpretation also but especially with when we start to study the whole universe using quantum mechanics. You may have to consider a wave function for the whole universe. There is a branch called quantum cosmology and in that people who work in that many physicists find this as the better interpretation all right but again there's no consensus we don't know what's actually happening